Hello everyone, uh, I thought I'd do this video because the government's gone and done a really stupid thing as usual. They've banned a certain type of knife or machete or whatever and it serves no purpose whatsoever and I'll point out how stupid it is, you know, at not stopping crime or killings or whatever. So I haven't got any myself but there's a certain type of knives called zombie knives, like a trade name. And they're a bit like some, you know, the cold steel stuff. They're just sort of meant to be fun machetes for chopping up stuff in the back garden. You know, they're a bit over the top. They're like the sort of fantasy sword type things. Not very practical at all, but people got fun out of them. And then somebody stabbed somebody with one, and then they've decided to ban all of them because it's completely irresponsible to market, you know, zombie killing weapons or something. So, obviously this is stupid because it's a pretty impractical weapon and only one person was killed with them. So, a parallel to our American friends would be, you know, when somebody gets shot in America and then they say it's this type of handguard on the gun or it was a pistol grip or something like that. If somebody's going to go and shoot somebody, it doesn't matter what, you know, furniture they've got on their gun or whatever, they're going to kill someone, aren't they? So, um, let's look at uh, some knives that are completely legally available. And bear in mind, a lot of these aren't legal to carry on you, they're legal to own. And that's what I want to stress, because this machete that was used to kill somebody wasn't legal to carry around on you. It was legal to own in your house or garden, but not carry around on you. So the crime that was being committed wasn't that this knife was available, or this blade was available. It was literally that the person wanted to go out and kill somebody. So what we're going to do is look at some knives that are either legal, like all of these are legal to own, and would be very good at killing people. So let's go over it, and I'll point out how stupid these laws or loopholes are. Because you see what the government likes to do is rather than look at why people might be wanting to stab each other, you know, broken homes, poverty, crime ridden areas, gang cultures, everything like that, what they'd rather do is essentially try and uh, get rid of a symptom, not the cause. So they'll go after a particular blade that was used, um, just how firearms are banned for, you know, not because everybody was shooting each other, but because there were a couple of shooting sprees and then they suddenly said, well, it was the guns that caused this to happen. No, they're almost an effect, aren't they? But enough about that. Let's uh, look at what's available to you. And if you were determined to kill somebody, how you could use it. So first we have a folding pocket knife. Already done a video on this one. Prometheus one, very good. Under the three uh, inch limit, it's a non-locking knife. So it doesn't lock out. You could legally carry this on you. Uh, obviously you wouldn't want to take it into a nightclub or a pub or anything, but it's an everyday carry knife, it's under the legal limit, it's not a non-locking blade but if you're determined enough you could obviously go for somebody of that and I know being under 3 inch means it should be not long enough to get into their vitals but somebody determined enough with a knife like this will just stab you over and over maybe in the neck and they'll kill you with it so, so this is a perfectly legal everyday carry knife that if somebody was determined to kill somebody with could do next up we have a typical kitchen knife and the reason I'm bringing this up is because a kitchen knife obviously can be bought very easily and cheaply. Uh, it's much harder to be traced because there's a lot more of them around. So it's very cheap, disposable if you're going to you know, kill somebody and you could conceal it somewhere on yourself pretty easily. And most UK stabbings do take place with knives like this, not fantasy knives or any of that. Next, something else that's perfectly legal. Bayonets and military fighting knives. On the left we have a Kalashnikov bayonet, designed to go onto a rifle and to be shoved into people. Um, again, obviously I'm not trying to say these knives should be banned, I'm completely opposite. I'm just pointing out how stupid these knee-jerk laws are, um, you know, going after a symptom, not a cause. So, said so this is a bayonet knife designed for stabbing. And these are perfectly legal, these are collectible, you know, if you were intent on killing somebody, bayonet knife would be pretty good. Next we have a K-Bar clone, this is an M-Tech Marine knife, exactly the same thing, a knife designed during World War II for the US Marines to stab people with. It's a fighting knife, you know, designed to easily stab with it. It's a nice knife, a very nice knife, but if you're determined to stab somebody, this is designed to do just that. It's not a you know, all-purpose knife. Next we have a um, hand axe, used for gardening. Fair bit of weight behind it, swing that at somebody's skull, you can imagine the damage it would do. Again, you can't legally carry any of these on you, but um, if you're going to go out and kill somebody, that doesn't matter to a criminal, does it? So, um, again, something perfectly legal, something they'd probably use. Next, we have the Cold Steel Gladius Machete. 
And this is the sort of thing I'd really worry might get targeted soon. Because this is made by Cold Steel, who in America literally say you can use these for defence or a bit of fun. Uh, because in America they have the First Amendment, of course, where they can say uh, stuff and not have to fear, you know, prosecution. But it's designed on the Roman Gladius sword, but just in a machete format. So it's got a stabbing point. Very good for efficiently thrusting into somebody. Obviously, I have it for fun in the garden, chopping up water jugs. But, of course, this is the sort of thing that could be targeted, because this is basically what those zombie killer machetes were. Fun machetes and knives, you know, for messing about with, for showing to your friends at your house as a collectible that have been targeted because apparently they promote violence. This doesn't promote violence any more than anything else here. Now, what we've got at the back, and this is where it gets really ludicrous, is a full-on sword. Full-on, there you go, medieval re uh, reproduction sword. And, obviously, this is a military weapon from years gone, used for killing people on a battlefield scale. Now, if I wanted to run up to somebody and hit them with this, you could imagine the damage it would do, because they were designed to kill, and the point would be very good for thrusting into somebody. Now, I know outside of most gangs, this is a bit too expensive for, um, sort of, you know, a killer's weapon, but I think, the, you know, it still stands to reason that, you know, if you wanted, carrying something you couldn't legally carry on you anyway, and you wanted to just chop somebody up with it, a sword would be a pretty good choice. Now, as I said, what am I getting out of this video? I'm simply getting at the fact that what the government is doing with a knee-jerk ban, where if it banned any one of these things because of a stabbing, isn't going to fix the problem. The problem is caused by a broken society, not the, you know, weapon itself. But, of course, as you've seen with lots and lots of these things when terrorist attacks happen in Europe or whatever, it's far easier to ban um, something related to an attack than it is to actually look at what's causing it. So I'll leave you with that. Um, you know, as I said, if I wanted to go out and kill lots of people, I wouldn't use any one of these. I'd plow my car into a group of people, as we saw, you know, happen with a truck in France. And really, you know, this is why it's so stupid that if you're a collector, like I am, you know, I do these YouTube videos, I have fun, people enjoy watching these. All this stuff is perfectly legal, but I'm going to be penalised and people like me are going to be penalised because some scumbag wants to kill somebody else with one of these weapons. And... As said, they could have done it perfectly, you know, if they did it with a kitchen knife, are they going to ban all kitchen knives? No, they're not, because lots of people already are stabbed to death every year with kitchen knives. Same in the States, actually, funnily enough. I think normally more people are stabbed to death in America each year than shot, but obviously the gun-grabbing politicians in the States don't like that, do they? Because uh, it's not convenient. But they're not going to ban the kitchen knives because somebody gets stabbed with them. But, um, of course... If they get stabbed with any of these other blades, all of a sudden, you know, it's, uh, oh, have to ban it, have to ban it, have to ban it. Um, to make it look like they're doing something. Not, you know, working out why so many people are in poverty now in this country and whatever else. So, there you go. Um, so it's even got on a convenient finger grip, a salt finger grip on this knife look for thrusting. So, there you go. Um, the zombie knife ban completely stupid, it's not going to work, and I really hope the company just rebrands their knife with something else, re-releases them, and they have to go through all the hurdles again of trying to ban them, because they have every right to sell their knives, they're not breaking any rules, and this is another knee-jerk reaction to a much deeper problem.